disease that preceded the crisis of this whole entire year 2020, the year of crises. Without further ado, whoa, wow, here's a long list. Okay, number one, endless war. That's right, neoliberalism has caused us to have a long time with endless war. It's unbelievable. It truly is. Number two, the everything industrial complex. That's right, I do mean everything. Number three, and uh, I know y'all, some of y'all are not going to like this, but must be said, the Kentucky Derby. Yes? Climate Indeed. change. Hey, okay, now just give me a minute. This Climate change. This is a very change. important issue for me as a horse. Uh, come here, boy. Where are hey. you? Uh -oh. uh, hang on. Has anyone seen my dog? dog? His name is Climate Change. He's about yay high. He wears a skull and crossbones collar. He doesn't really answer to his name. Uh, I thought he signed a contract. I only let him off leash for a second, I swear. And then all of a sudden, everything around me was big. And, and everyone was dressed like surgeons, wearing masks like in an operating room. And... I had to order my lattes online. And then a mob of radical socialist hooligans was calling me a, a, a racist. <laughs> Does anyone have any juice? Some juice. <laughs> juice. Ding! I wish everything could just go back to normal. <gasps> Climate change? Come here, boy! Come here, boy! I want you to <laughs> <laughs> Climate change! Ding! Wow, okay, uh... Seems like our friend, uh, little Karen over here, wasn't caring enough about her dog climate change. Am I right? <laughs> but seriously, folks, let's get on with the show. I'm anxious to see what our artists and participants have come up with this week in response to normal was a crisis. Let's find out. <laughs>
exciting in my world. I'm working hard. I'm doing housework, keeping up with family. Hey, Daddy. Hey, sweetie. How you doing? I'm fine. I couldn't get out of bed yesterday, but I'm fine. Things are good. I'm watching a great show on Netflix. 
After the episodes are over, I stare at the black screen and think about how bad can life be if I can afford Netflix and a couch? You know, buck up, buttercup. Stop staring at a black screen. And then I think about how black feels because I know how black and blank and empty I feel. But I'm fine. You don't want to hear all that. I can't burden you with the reality that sometimes I wonder why I'm even bothering with keeping on. You want to hear about the interesting things I'm doing and thinking and all the good things in my world. Actually, I had an interesting thought the other day about who tends your grave after everyone you loved is gone. Who puts flowers beside the stone and makes sure it's not overgrown and who even stops and looks and wonders about who you were. I'm fine. I haven't seen friends lately. I mean, how can we? I think about them. I wonder if they've had enough of me and don't really want to talk because I'm too much of a downer and don't have much interesting to say anymore these days beyond I'm fine. How are you doing? Have you gotten away on an adventure? Tell me about your boss and job and everything wonderful in your world. I don't ask them if they too find themselves wondering about what the point of all of this is or about the long silences after they say they're fine because we're all fine. I'm fine.
There are people. There are stories. The people think they shape the stories, but the reverse is often closer to the truth. There is a red and angry world. Red things happen there. The world eats your joy, eats your dreams, eats all the things that make you human. And you become a monster. The pain cannot be buried and forgotten. The pain cannot remain in the past or hidden beneath the soil. That which is buried is not gone. That which is planted will grow. Beneath the red earth, there are muffled, blooming voices. Beneath the crystal ocean, there are terrible sights. And the ripples widen across the globe through the very darkest minds. You thought that it could not get worse. You imagine that things had reached their limits. Do not delude yourself. There are no limits to its destruction. I have tolerated your species for long enough. Your cruelty and your greed and your insufferable arrogance. You blight the soil and poison the rivers. You raise the vegetation till you cannot even feed your own kind. Fools. If nature were to shrug or raise an eyebrow, then you should all be gone. Is there some pattern that I should perceive in this senseless pageant of atrocities? Is there some truth that may be divined from the entrails of normal? It seems useless. I struggle to impose structure that has meaning on the madness that churns within my being, within this world. But tonight, I glimpsed the abyss, and I fear that it may be bottomless. I know that there must be an answer, a light in the blackness, but I don't know if I can find it on my own. In the Precambrian, when all the world was weeds and nothing crawled or swam or flew, the earth gods ruled the last dawn by Lunera, till the sun grew red and swollen and all life fled. They could have made their kingdom of plants as perfect as I'll make the kingdom of men, and there would never have been need for any other form of life. They could have kept this planet for their own, and yet did not. I wonder why. Instead, they let the fish glide upon the wild Silurian tide and took their forms and played with them. Yet never made this world a cool, icy paradise. Nor when the fish with legs boiled up from Devonian mud did they impose reptilian utopia, but watched instead, delighted in the dazzling diversity. Is this then what it is to be a god? To know and never do. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us on this second installment of the Squalus Presents Digital Salon. Normal was a crisis. And like the sign says, uh, if you like what you see, uh, don't forget to donate. There should be a link in the comments in the chat section here if you're watching us live. And, uh, yeah, if you can... Say Squalus Presents on your donation. You can know that the uh, money will go directly into a fund to support future artists to participate in this same kind of program where we get artists from, in this case, all over the state of Kentucky and all over the country to participate and respond to a common theme. <clears throat> so, I would be remiss if I, in mentioning donation, didn't also say a big thank you to our partners at the Kentucky Arts Council, the Louisville Metro Government, the Snowy Owl Foundation, and the Fund for the Arts. That's right. So thanks to all those people. 
and uh, happy holidays to you all. Remember this holiday season, shop local, fight Nazis, think dangerously, act safely, and if you're human, for goodness sake, wear a mask. That's right, folks. Thanks very much.